I've been meaning to do this for a while, and that is setting up this bad boy, the Meta DX, as a barebow riser. I'm going to build it out specifically for indoors. This is going to be a start of a series, a little mini series, I guess, on uh, how I would go about setting up and specifically tuning your bow, your barebow specifically, for 18 meters or 20 yard shooting for this year's indoor season. So like I said there in the intro, I want to set this bear bow up here, this Meta DX from Win and Win, as a bear bow indoor specific rig. So what I'm going to do is take you through kind of a little mini series. So if you haven't yet, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell down below. It really genuinely helps this channel and you'll get notified when I upload future videos to this series because I'm excited about it. I haven't built a bear bow specific rig yet for indoors as far as tuning the bow specifically for exactly 18 meters or 20 yards. And that's what I'm going to do throughout this series. First, I'm going to set this bow up, then I'm going to build some arrows and then tune it and then shoot a few rounds at 18 meters and see how it goes and uh, let you know along the way how I think this Meta DX works for a bare bow riser. So what I have been shooting is the Win & Win ATF X, the 25 inch as a bare bow. I'd like to get my hands on a 27 inch riser because I really like the ATF-X. I will use it as a 27 inch riser at bare bow. I just think uh, a little bit longer bow and the string walking. More so for me, especially because of my really deep crawls due to my low anchor. Uh, you know, it's just a compromise that I have to deal with using the anchor that I do use. So what I'm gonna do is take apart that ATF-X and slap everything I need to on this Meta DX riser and go from there. Now, a bit of a disclaimer. I'm not a bare bow expert, nor do I pretend to be. However, I am absolutely a recurve tuning expert, and I believe most of the principles that I've learned through recurve tuning apply to bare bow. There are some definite questions as far as bare bow specific stuff comes up, especially when string walking where tiller, knocking point, and uh, you know rest height, and all of those things kind of are very, very, not complicated, but it's just very different than Olympic style recurve. So I've got a good idea of what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I have a lot of reason behind that. So as we progress through this video, if you haven't heard the information this way before, it's probably because I'm a recurve shooter. I'm not a bare bow shooter. I don't uh, pretend to be an expert in the bare bow community. I really like shooting bare bow and I enjoy it a lot. And I don't think there's any right or wrong way to shoot bare bow. It sure seems that way, at least because everybody's got different setups and different reasons behind those setups. So let's get into setting up this bow. First, I'm gonna finish breaking down the ATF-X, take the rest off and get this one set up. Because this bow has adjustable height as far as the actual uh, rest location is concerned, right now I have the lowest plate on it, which is a stock standard win and win geometry to have it in the low point. And I'm gonna switch it to the next spot up, which looks to be about a millimeter higher. I'm not gonna go extremely high, Maybe I'll play with that eventually and see how that goes, only because maybe the asymmetricness of the riser, in theory, the knocking point higher up because the arrow moves higher up, should load the bottom limb less when I go into my deep crawls, so it'll probably feel better the higher I have the arrow, at least I'm assuming so, and uh, that would help me reduce the amount of negative tiller that I end up running because I like to use the tiller to make the bow hold good, you know, nice and steady. I don't use the tiller for anything else other than that because I don't have stabilizers I can adjust to make the bow hold better. So anyway, in a nutshell, putting the next highest plate on in the low position, the, the, the middle two lines, because you can see here, there's four lines. This one that's already on the bow, the big lines on the bottom because that's the lowest setting. And then I'm putting plate B on and using it in the low position as opposed to the high position, which would move it up a, you know, another line, two lines, or you can put this plate on upside down and go really radical, really, really high up. And uh, I don't know, that's a huge jump. That's a quarter inch probably. So this looks to be 16th of an inch, a millimeter or so. And so maybe I'll go up two lines instead of just one. We'll find out. I'll make it up as I go along. 
So I really like this riser as a recurve riser. It's very dead in the hand and it felt very, very good. And I'm really happy that Win and Win got rid of the stupid no dampers rule for Barebow uh, because it really makes a big difference as far as that's concerned to remove a lot of vibration. And I can't remember, is it dampers or dampeners? Dampeners dampen vibration, but dampers, I don't know. It's a play on words and I don't understand it. I am definitely no English major, nor do I pretend to be. So those of you that know your stuff, comment below. Is it a damper or a dampener? I, I just don't remember. So I'm putting the corresponding plate on and I'm gonna go for the high mode. You know, really live dangerously here. Actually, I'm not putting it on yet because I need a through bolt from the sniper drop away that I'm gonna use on this bow because I really like it. And get that dialed in. So moving forward, there's a lot of stuff I'm gonna be using here on this uh, channel today. And anything that I am using, I'll have links in the description below on where you can grab stuff that I'm using here in case you're interested. And if you are interested in setting up and tuning your bow just like I do, I don't have a barebow specific manual yet, but I do have a recurve specific manual. It's called Tuning for Performance. I will have links in the description below and a card at the top up there to my website, jakekaminski.com, where you can grab this book. So a problem that I'm already running into that I didn't have on any other bow because this Meta DX is very different, the drop away mechanism of the Sniper, this half moon here that rotates back and forth inside there, you see it kind of really close to the riser there and it goes away as the rest uh, wire goes up, moves away from the riser and shoots back towards it. I can't slide the rest far forward enough to, at least with this wire, I gotta check the other wire, to get that wire in the center of the rear plunger hole. If I slide it forward any further, that half moon slams into the riser. Not only will it mark up the riser, but it prevents the actual rest from dropping all the way. So I'm gonna see if I have another wire that'll allow me to reach further forward. I know they come with two different wires, I just don't remember. I think one's for indoor arrows, one's for outdoor arrows. Honestly, I don't see the difference, but um, I'm gonna see if it's a longer wire. And worst case scenario, I'll bend it and make it straighter so it reaches out further. All right, so here is the wire. So the difference between the indoor and the outdoor is the length of the, the protrusion out from the bow. The indoor arrows one, I think is wider maybe. Heck if I know. And this other wire is longer, so I'm gonna swap to this other wire, so that'll help reach me further forward so I can still use the rear plunger hole and have the rest right under the center of the plunger. The reason I wanna do that is if I have any inconsistency this way, especially because we string walk, I want that pivot point to be right under where the plunger hole is. I don't want it to be further back, because then you get weird up and down variances compared to left and right variances when you make mistakes. And I want everything to be consistent and make sense when I am analyzing my shot and trying to figure out what went wrong when it does go wrong. Now I've not swapped this wire out, so let's see how it goes. I think I've tightened it because I didn't want it to move enough where it does not want to come loose and I am about to round the head, the hex head, not strip it out because that's not the correct term, about to round the head off. It needs to move anyway because if I can't get it loose, I can't adjust the height at all. Well, let's get, here goes. Thank God it came loose and I didn't round it. So I'm just gonna hold that block in place and pull the wire out and put the new wire in and hope nothing moves. All right, well definitely now, you can see how the rest is right under the center of that plunger hole. So now it's in the right spot. So it'll work exactly how I want it to. Excellent. Now you can see how that rest is right under the plunger hole. The height's not adjusted or set or anything like that but the actual front to back positioning, the angle of it, it's nice and straight and uh, it's right how I like it. So first step done. And most of the steps done because bare bow, there's not a lot going on. It's really just this. And then you throw some weights on it and call it a day basically. Till it comes to bear shaft tuning. Apparently I do not have an R-Core grip for my win and win. So 
I'm gonna have to order one. So I just don't have one of the Arcor grips here, unfortunately, but I do have a Barebow one that I've built for myself that I've been shooting on this ATFX. I will be ordering some glass grips for this because I really prefer the gra glass grips and the edge that can be put on them to be used for a Barebow grip sear. I prefer the feel of wood, but the wood grips are, uh, you know, they have grain. So as you're trying to pull your fingernail off the edge, they uh, make some noises that are not ideal. And you can feel the grain and I anticipate that. So I need something nice and slick and smooth. And that's why I'll pick glass grips from Arcor. If you are heading over to Arcor though, to check out their stuff, do use code Kaminsky at checkout for 10% off. That's on their entire product line. I will have links in the description below in case you haven't checked those grips out yet as well. All right. Before I put weights on it, I wanna get the limbs aligned and everything. I'm gonna use a stabilizer for that, even though I'm shooting it as bare bow, uh, because it's critical to have the, bear, the uh, bow aligned itself. It just makes the bow feel better, it sounds better, and it just overall reacts better. I'm gonna be using these uh, MXT-10 wood limbs. I uh, really, really like them, they're super smooth. Normally I like foam a lot better, uh, but because I'm shooting bare bow, I'm string walking, the bow can feel a little harsh from time to time. So I'm just gonna go and use wood and make it as soft a feel after the shot so it's not too harsh for me and uh, just roll with that. And hopefully I'll really like it. Known straight stabilizer. Very, very, very important. Use the biter blocks, tried and true. Looks pretty dang straight to me. So I'm lining that string up in the center of the stabilizer, checking the tube biter blocks, pretty dang close. I'm gonna take a picture of it to verify. Sweet. Verified. You look in the center, string in the center of the stabilizer, you scroll up, center of the block, center of the block. Nice and lined up. So with your camera, you can zoom in and take a picture from one given point and it shows you everything. It's a lot better than standing still because it's hard when you're wobbling trying to get your string alignment, you know, your stabilizer lined up and then check your blocks. So now that my stabilizer and limbs and all that are aligned, actually I should put the blocks back in first. Then I'm gonna grab a SuperDrive 23, throw a knock in it and get my center shot set for the actual bow. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Usually just eyeballing it because it's a parallel shaft will get it really 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 close plus or minus a sixteenth of a turn at most in my experience at least to my eye like when I align everything to my eye. These are supposedly pretty dang good arrows and it's just about the right spine at 475 so I should be able to shoot a little bit lighter draw weight at least I'm hoping I can and uh, bring my point on a little closer get my crawl down just a smidge although these arrows are super super lightweight so that may not end up happening. At least get the arrow near the center of the plunger so it doesn't affect the center shot. Just a touch outside of center by a very small amount. And because the limbs are aligned, I only need the reference of the top block. So if you look here, center of the block, center of the arrow, dead set, center shot. Straight down the center of the stabilizer, straight down the center of the arrow, everything's dead straight, just like I like it. <clears throat> I'm not gonna change that at all. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this uh, rest height, make sure it's all set up correctly. Check my knocking point, pillar, brace height, all those things and make sure they're pretty close. I'm gonna bring this rest height up a smidge. Looks good to me. Super snug. Not gonna move this way. Perfect. Got a little play in this uh, sniper. I wonder if one of the washers that was in there squirted itself out. I'm gonna fix that. I don't want this to happen. That's that's annoying. That's from the rest vibrating because I think there's a washer that moved its way out of there on accident, so I gotta make sure I get it back in place. Because there's these two teeny tiny little washers 
that are on either side of the little half moon. You can barely even see them in the bag. They're so thin. Maybe they fell out when I swapped the wire. It must have been what happened. Good thing it came with extras. Fat fingers don't help with this. I did it. I finished it up. Unfortunately, it wasn't on camera because I got so flustered and frustrated with this sniper rest. And you probably didn't want, well, maybe you would have wanted to watch the footage of me trying to get this fixed. But essentially, there's no way that any normal human being can possibly get those two washers on either side. One on either side, total of two of this half moon adjustable movement device deal of the sniper part. I tried for a very, very long time and gave up after I lost all the washers and just use a plastic bag that their washers came in and cut it and shoved it in the spot and called it a day. And now it doesn't move and it doesn't rattle and vibrate. So it's a lot better and I'm done. I'm, I'm done, I quit, I'm over and it's, it's, it's assembled. The bow is put together and uh, unfortunately you missed me setting my tiller and brace height and things like that, but that's not very hard. I put the limb bolts out as far as they could possibly go, both the top and bottom. I did that without the bow strung to make sure they were as far out as I could get them safely. Essentially, you know, you take them, take the limb bolts out as far as you can until they lose contact with the tips of the limb, the fork of the limb down here. And then you go back down until it touches the limb and you go back one half, one half turn more in. And that's as far out as the limb bolts can go. So I did that and I ended up with a little bit of negative tiller, but not as much as I needed. So then I increased the top limb bolt pressure to increase the bottom split to get a bigger negative tiller down here. So I ended up right about a quarter inch of negative tiller just under that, maybe a 16th or a 32nd under that. This is where I'm gonna start with it. I put some weights on it that I've used on my ATFX, although I had to swap the locations top to bottom because this weight that I'm using, that I'm developing and working on releasing sooner than later, hopefully, uh, hit the limb bolt. So I couldn't put it down here. I had to move it up here and put my Thunderstruck brass one that I've got down here upside down so it clears the limb bolt just like that. So uh, brace height is set to 22 and a half centimeters, which is right about eight and three quarter, eight and seven eighths, give or take. Uh, I've already got a knocking point and everything preliminary set, preliminarily set because I've shot this uh, string on the ATFX. This, I did move the rest up, so I'm sure this knocking point will have to come up as well, but I won't find out until I'm shooting them because I'm shooting fatter arrows and that affects the knocking point. So what I am going to do is uh, next, not in this video, but in a subsequent video, I'm going to take these Super Drive 23s and I'm gonna fletch them up. I'll fletch them with feathers because I weighed out feathers versus the AAE traditional veins because uh, that's what I was considering using because I know that they're very thin and lightweight, same material as the Waves and the Wave Pros, which I've successfully used both of those veins in the past and the Trad veins are nice and thin and lightweight and they're bigger, so they'd be good for indoors on recurve style arrows, but feathers are still lighter. Five and a quarter inch flu flus that are unburned, three of them weigh 17 grains versus three of the four inch uh, wave, or excuse me, AAE trad veins weigh 17 grains, so they're the same. Once I burn the feathers, they'll shorten and actually reduce in weight. I don't know how much, but a decent amount I would imagine. So I will be putting feathers on and burning them, to make sure that I've got as much drag, as much steering and stabilizing abilities on these arrows as humanly possible, which is better for indoors. Plus the feathers move out of the way, give me clearances for the rest and the shelf if I have any contact there, so that all of those issues will go away. And recently, actually, I, I kind of gave a breakdown of the three different main types of veins that you can. I'll have links in the description below and a card at the top up there. If you want to watch that video, you get a breakdown as to the ins and outs of each type of vein, whether that be a vein, a feather, a spin wing, or alternative options. Personally, I'm really excited. I've not shot a fat carbon arrow. I've actually not shot a fat arrow, a real fat arrow, out of a bear bow before. I've shot the uh, Carbon Express Maxima Recurve RZs, but they're not very big. They're on the smaller side. They are bigger than X10s, but they're definitely not as big as 23s. So 
I'm excited to see how these work. And because I have the bow weight so low, this is also a 475 spine. And the points that I have are on the lighter side, kind of. Yeah, they're 125 grains. So I'll probably start with these arrows at full length with the limb bolts, the tiller bolts as far out as I possibly can, see how the tune is, and then go from there. Maybe I'll have to shorten the arrows or whatever. I don't know yet and we'll find out together as I'm trying to tune and set this up. But the preliminary stuff, like I said, is done. All the important bits that really is a solid foundation to build a good solid tune upon is done. The reason that I really do everything methodically in the way I did it in the order that I've done it, where making sure your limbs are aligned first, then setting your center shot, then brace height and tiller and all of those things, what that really ensures is that you're starting with a really good lined up system to begin with. So you're not going to compensate with other things to make up for, you know, like a band-aid of a problem that should have been fixed before. You know, like if your limb alignment's off, that'll affect the dynamic needs of your center shot. And if that's off, then it affects the dynamic need of plunger tension or tune of the arrow and things like that. And it cascades and it keeps go getting worse and worse and it's harder to chase your tail that way. So starting from a good solid platform that you know is straight, that you know is set up, how it's supposed to be, and then you go from there, steps forward, to make it less confusing and less difficult and hopefully more forgiving because the arrow is wanting to be delivered straight and you don't have a bunch of compounding things fighting each other to make that arrow deliver straight. So I hope that kind of makes sense. At least to highlight the importance of getting your bow set up preliminarily as best as humanly possible. So. I'm excited to shoot this bow. I am really, really happy to be able to shoot it in a lower draw weight configuration, hopefully, and not have to shoot like 46 pounds. I don't know how much less this will be, maybe three, four pounds less than that. So in the low 40 pound range, which I'm excited about, that should reduce my crawl some. And if I can run longer arrows, that'll also reduce my crawl some. So I'm not shooting for point on here at 18 meters, 20 yards. I'd have to shoot some big telephone poles that probably would reach halfway down to the target in order for that to happen due to my lower anchor. So I'm not changing that, and I'm just not interested in changing it at all due to several factors that I've covered in the past. So I'm just gonna run what I've got and do the best that I can with it. So again, if you haven't yet, do subscribe because I'm working on making this a little mini series for you to check out and see how I go through my process from a high level recurve shooter standpoint to set up and tune my bare bow for 18 meters and 20 yards. And you'll be notified if you hit that notification bell when I upload the next videos in this series. Do consider supporting this channel. I produce all this content for free for everybody around the world to enjoy. And uh, your help genuinely supports this channel and allows me to produce more of this content for more people to enjoy out there.